Good morning, everyone. So today is Scientific Temper Day. Uh, what an honor to speak on a Scientific Temper Day on critical thinking and the education system, especially in the kind of situation we are in. Uh, as much as we have to celebrate Scientific Temper Day, and we just celebrated our 76th Independence Day. Just three days before, there was an incident in this country wherein a Dalit boy was killed for drinking water from the same pot as his upper caste teacher did. So this is the situation of education system in India wherein rationalism, scientific temper and critical thinking is very much needed. So that is the reason I felt this topic is prevalent and very significant in today's day and time. The topic of critical thinking and education system is important because of political, religious, socio-economic, cultural and various issues which are filled in this country today. Especially when there is fake information being passed on on a daily basis. In a day and time wherein everything is mentioned as scientific, everything is claimed as was there in the past, we have to ensure that why questioning and arguing or argumentation is the need of the day. Now, rationalism is a philosophical moment which started in uh, the, during the age of reason in 17th century in Europe, whereas critical thinking has been in human civilization since 2,500 years ago, during the time of Socrates. If it will be, can just kind of attribute this method of teaching to one person, it was Socrates' method of teaching, which was famously regarded by Plato, one of the, you know, well, uh, uh, sorry, well-known philosopher during our time. So Plato, as a student of Socrates, recorded this critical thinking. Critical thinking comes from the word critical. Critical means critique, basically to judge and to discern, to question everything, why, who, when, where, how, right? The definition of critical thinking is basically an intelli the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning or communication as a guide to belief and action. The question we need to ask today is whether it is happening in our society or the education system. Now, the critical thinking has been attributed to Greeks in uh, 470 BC, but if at all you come to ancient India, it was there in Indian philosophy as well. The Charvakas, Jainism, Buddhism, Advaita, Dvaita, even coming to the 12th century Karnataka, Basavanna's revolution, was a major uh, thing which happened or reform which happened in terms of critical thinking. But unfortunately, what is happening today? Now, what is the process of critical thinking? So Plato says to bring up a child, you need a community. You need a village to bring up a child. And when we just do the critical thinking or implement the critical thinking in the education system, you are just providing a good human being to the society. Now, how you can inculcate that critical thinking in a child's mind or a young, young mind? So these are the questions which needs to be asked on every issue which is kind of presented to, presented to you. There should be scope for argument, agreement, disagreement. That is how the thinking happens. That is how humans evolve. The genius of Socrates can be understood by what Steve Jobs once said about Socrates. If at all I could trade, you know, if at all I could spend an afternoon with Socrates, I would trade all my technology. That was the genius of Socrates. Now, 
Coming to the today's world, importance of critical thinking in education system. Teachers are the sculptors of young minds and I totally believe in it. I come from a very, very conservative family. My parents were illiterate. The books which I read, the music which I listened, the vachanas which I read, it was most of all, it is the teachers who taught me these lessons have made an impact on my life, my rationalism, my critical thinking, or my questioning, and the person I am today. So that is why we have to ensure that these basic tenets are inculcated in our education system. But is our current education system doing it? Well, we are one of the fortunate people because our pioneers wanted a very good future for this nation. That is why they made rationalism, secularism, critical thinking, scientific temper as the ethos of our founding principles. We inherited a philosophy as well as the constitution which would pave way for all of these things. It's already written in the constitution in various ways, but it also casts a responsibility on all the citizens to carry forward the develop, carry forward and develop the scientific temper. The scientific temper has been defined by Nehru as a way of life. This should have been our way of life, but somewhere in the middle that way has been lost and there's no way. Only the life is there without the scientific temper. If at all you talk about scientific temper today, you would be regarded as anti-national with a provision to visit Pakistan as a tourist. That's how, you know, anybody who talks about scientific temper is being treated. Now, why critical thinking in education system? Basically, critical thinking in education system for the simple reason that as per the census in 2021, around 25% or 26% of our population, population is 0 to 14 years old category. Okay? We are one of the largest demography in the world which would have the youngest minds. And we would also in 2024 or 2026, we would be one of the uh, most population, populous country, population country, populated country in the world, okay? It's on us to give that kind of population, younger generation to the world because world would be on our shoulders. These are the people who would take the humanity together. Now, if at all, you don't put this kind of rationalism in their mind, you know, we just have to dwell in the past, which is not so glorious, though we claim to be glorious, right? Now, why do I sound so concerned? Why do I feel that we are going backwards in terms of critical thinking, scientific temper or rationalism? The reason is what comes out of all these places. Our parliament, our PMO, our ministry, judiciary, press, civil society, teaching community and scientific community. These are the people in power. They are the policy makers for this nation. So what kind of policies they are making to ensure that we provide this kind of resourceful younger population to the world in future? Are they doing the right thing? Does it seem so, right? Now, this is the famous quote by our Prime Minister. A Prime Minister of a country which has 135 crore people. Now, all said and done, he is one of the most popular Prime Minister in the history of India. People listen to him. During COVID, when he asked people to come and ban Kali, they did. Now the onus lies on him that when such a large crowd listens to you, you should ensure that what you tell to that crowd. It was also a responsibility of that person to tell that 
banging tali wouldn't cure covid that is where we are missing the picture and you all know what is the havoc which created further right we did a covid festival he says ganesha was the first case of plastic surgery okay karna was born through genetic engineering now once this ignorance especially in a era of information moving so fast people in my village be believe that this is the ultimate truth right as neil degrasse tyson one of the famous astrophysicists says ignorance is like a virus once it starts spreading it can only be cured by reason unfortunately we have reason missing in this country he is the person who actually chairs indian science congress he is the inaugurator of such a privileged ceremony right now this indian science congress had lot of information lot of misinformation being told during the science congress which is kind of viewed by the world around what kind of example you set for the world today's world or the future world now we have a issue in this country i i want to say that issue we have a behavior in this country wherein we think that everything in the past was glorious now that is not true we should appreciate the fact that we live in one of the times where we are the healthiest of all we have the uh, we en enjoy the luxuries of all i was just telling today to somebody emperor shah jahan he was a emperor during that time he lost almost 6 out of his 12 children today that is a rarity even the poorest of the poor will have a child you know will not have so many so much infant mortality during birth so when you say that everything was glorious in the past you need to be cognizant of the fact that past was not glorious for each and every one especially for the poor people do you have a family history of your grandfathers great grandparents what were they we don't know so how do you claim that everything was you know hunky dory in the past it was not for the common man so i totally agree with what salman rushdie says the ancient wisdoms are modern nonsense it need not always be true we need to acknowledge this fact now the responsibility is also on scientific or scientific community and the teachers it was my biology teacher who made me question the untouchability during periods it was my kannada literature lesson which made me question some of the blind practices that was prevalent in my surroundings it was also the polio campaign in the school that made me question two young boys who were in my village who were never taken to the polio drop and they succumb to polio because their parents believed that uh you know consumption of polio drops would make them impotent they died by the age of 18 now such a responsibility is on the teachers especially in the rural areas people believe what teachers say So Kuwempu says Kuwempu is one of the Rashtra Kavi from Karnataka one of the rationalist from Karnataka one of my favorite poet he says science teachers who teach after teaching science in the classes go home and look at rahu kala guliva kala are not teachers are not teachers at all they are donkeys carrying science unfortunately you know that happens not only science you know science teachers even scientists in this country right now if it all i we have to kind of give some award to the nonsense which is spilled out by our ministers on a daily basis i'm sure every day we can have some darwin award ceremony going to one of our ministers so our minister of secretary for the hrd questions darwin's theory of evolution saying that no one saw ape turn man and he says Darwin's theory is scientifically wrong and so in schools and colleges it must be changed since man came from earth 
he has always been man and will always be man so how do you expect children to understand this and question this if at all a minister or a ministry of state uh, uh, comes from this statement comes from the hrd right he is the person who sets the syllabus for your kids for our kids for our children that is the level of thinking they have our one of our mp says that astrology is the science of making calculations which was there you know lakhs of years before and he also says that astrology is the number one science and they, there was another mp who said that we had nuclear test during the age of almost 1000 thousands of years ago recently a famous astrologer in karnataka who is coming on a news channel on a daily basis he couldn't predict his own future because he was just murdered by two people who took loan from him now how do you claim that such is that is number one science and i know people who have gone to these astrologers who have damaged their life because somebody who has psychological or mental health issues these astrologers spill out all spit out all the nonsense in the world and people who suffer from delusion which can be cured by a you know psychologist uh, sorry a psychiatrist have gone to an astrologer and they have just kind of messed up their life and this comes on a national television on a daily basis to your home and this is what our children watch on a daily basis we also have something called as theory of everything to counter stephen hawking's theory of everything our government's theory of everything is like everything was already there it's easy right internet it was already there telephone it was already there nuclear test it was already there pushpa vimana it was already there right so we don't have to do anything just that it was already there just that none of us knew only when somebody else invents and discovers it then we understand that it was already there right so this is a claim by one of the cm theory of evol- evolution to the- <laughs> tears of procreation this is by a high court judge wherein he says that uh, peacock tears would uh, uh, is the reason for procreation peacocks procreate when they just shed tears i don't know where he had seen it but he just mentioned that and now the question is you know like uh, if at all these people make these claims what's the harm the problem is these are the people in power they are the people who make judgment on your cases they are the people who make the laws regarding the education they are the people who sets the syllabus what kind of literature needs to go into your textbook now with what confidence you can just ensure that pe- people are capable of making world ca- class citizens of course our uh, vishwaguru dream has been postponed to 2047 that's a different thing but even to 2047 can we make it i don't think so with this kind of syllabus right from no string to touring everything has a scientific reason if at all you see the whatsapp forward sometimes i just kind of wonder you know I, and i'm also scared that people in my family watch these things and they come to me and ask you know you have to wear it no string because it has some scientific reason what is the scientific reason then why men don't wear it because if at all it is beneficial to women you know it should be beneficial to men also right why we don't see men wearing no string such questions are never entertained because that is anti national question you cannot ask such question so as i said right the problem is these are the people in power who decide our future now for our children they say that astrology is the number one science and he also says that everybody needs to study astrology he sends his daughter to study mba in canada this is the hypocrisy right so this is what really angers me and frustrates me because we have given a responsibility to make 
laws for us, whereas they just make crappy laws for us. While their kids, you just see all these ministers who talk about Sanskrit, who talk about reviving our golden past, who talk about reviving our customs, heritage, and tradition. They have their kids sta studying in Stanford's and Oxford's of the world. So, is this nonsense only for us? Now, the consequences of all these statements and all these people being in the lawmaking position has been on these various fields. Of course, as I've, I've been just telling all this why, on the future generation, on the nation, on the scientific community, on the education system, civil society, research and development. Now, you see how these people have controlled everything and just kind of failed these fields. A new education policy has been brought. Now, this new education policy has been kind of making a lot of uproar in Karnataka. As I said in the first example, right, just few days before, a kid was killed because it drank water from the same pot as an upper caste teacher. Now, don't you think school should be the place where rationalism has to be at the maximum? Because that is where our future is generating. But that is not happening so. The new education policy was supposed to be setting all these things right. Unfortunately, instead of these things, what they have been doing is, based on their knowledge and information, they have set a curriculum which is, you know, which is without rationalism, scientific temper, critical thinking. Now, when you ask what are the sources of your knowledge and information, the NEP head for Karnataka, he says that Pythagoras theorem was, has Vedic roots and uh, somebody asked what is the source of inf his information, he says Quora. Okay, and there was another person who said Pythagoras theory is wrong. He said his source of information is Google. So, you know, we have people graduating from WhatsApp University and we have Quora laureates as our, you know, policy makers. I'm not kidding. This is the person who is the, who is heading the national education policy for Karnataka. A population of six, cro six crores and we are supposed to be one of the most intelligent people in the nation. I don't understand if we can't even select a good national education policy head what intelligence is for, right? The damage and the destruction has been immense. Now, how this damage and destruction has caused in what ways? In terms of money? in terms of policies, in terms of syllabus. The investments on R&D, research and development in this country has reduced drastically. Now, no nation has ever progressed without investment in research and development. We were, uh, when I was a student, we were told that we have a vision 2020 and we are going to just beat China in few years. Now forget about China, we are just comparing ourselves to Pakistan, you know, that, that is the situation we have landed in. China spends the highest uh, on uh, research and development, uh, sorry, South, uh, South Korea spends the highest, 4.23, China spends 2.11% of its GDP on R&D, whereas India with such a young demography spends only 1% of GDP on R&D and they have reduced the budget for higher education. In fact, uh, recently there was a protest by JNU students for hiking the students for uh, so fees for higher studies. So basically they don't want any research and development to be happening in this place. They don't want people to study further. They don't want people to question and criticize or condemn anything. All they want is sheep who follow their orders. Look at the number of patents, right? 
Uh, we filed 14,961 patents applications in 2017, while China filed 1.24 million applications in the same year. That is the difference. You see the policy, you would know the result. What is the investment on education by this government? We have only 3.5% of our GDP going to the education sector. That's the lowest compared to all the other major economies in the world. This is what they have done for our kids, our future generation. We are failing in all the indices. If at all you see World Hunger Index, Happiness Index, Freedom of Press Index, Freedom of Religion Index, all the indexes we are failing. And what happens when we fail these indices? Government happily rejects these claims. We don't go by that report. We don't go by World Bank report. We don't go by Brookings report. We don't go by these reports because they are all anti-India. So the only correct report is we becoming a Vishwaguru in 2047 because that is a report which is coming from our PMO. See, you can see World Inequality Report is flawed. Who says? Sitaraman says. Development, uh, uh, Development Minister Smriti Irani on, uh, you know, Global Hunger Index, she says it's wrong. Global hun Hunger Index is wrong as per the government. Covid data, nobody died in Covid. That is, who says? The government says. Press, press Freedom Index, it's wrong, questionable and non-transparent. So we don't go by what is said about our failures as well. If at all we don't even acknowledge that we have failed, how do we course correct, right? It is not possible. The other thing which the government has been doing is elimination of reason. All these people have been declared as anti-Hindu, anti-India, anti-national. It's easy. Anybody who questions governments on these, society on these, society on these bad practices, they are either arrested or they are dismissed from life. What does the government say? Uh, wants. Government wants sheep. A famous poet in Karnataka called as Professor Nisar Ahmed. He wrote a poem uh, back in the days called as Kurigalu Sar Kurigalu. Sheep Sar Sheeps. We're all sheep. In fact, uh, there was a famous quote from uh, George Carlin. He says that government doesn't want anybody who questions. Government wants sheep who just follow and obey their orders. That's the kind of people or population they are creating in the future. Now the NEP 2022, there was a big uproar in Karnataka about the NEP 2022 for various reasons. I will give some of the reasons and famous astrophysicist says that it promotes unscientific thinking. Now who has created this NEP? The review committee for Karnataka has been all the people who have never been appreciative of rationalism, critical thinking or scientific temper. Now, how do you expect them to, you know, make any way for these aspects in the syllabus or the new education policies, right? All these rationalists, intellectuals and critics, they were dismissed from the real world. Anybody who questions them, condemns them, criticizes them, either they have faced arrest or they have been removed from the world. And then there are who are not there, but they were there in the syllabus. They have been removed from the literary world as well. So, major articles and writings about these people have been removed from Karnataka textbooks. On Periyar, Ambedkar, Kuvempu, Basavanna, rather they have included 
Hegde Ward, one of the RSS right wing ideologue, his articles. So this is what they would want to teach to our children. Now, they have also removed Narayan Guru. Narayan Guru, uh, those people who are from the south, they know that uh, he was one of the key revolutionary from uh, who brought in, brought in the major social revolution in Kerala and some parts of Karnataka by opening up the education for all straight of the society. This is what the government or the society which supports them doesn't like. Today, Kerala is one of the most literate state and uh, the Narayana Vidyalayas are, uh, you know, uh, known to be the centers which have helped students from the lower state to get education. They have removed the chapter on Narayan Guru from Karnataka textbook. Who are the other people they have removed? They have removed Basavanna. Basavanna was a 12th century revolutionary. They have not removed Basavanna, they have diluted Basavanna. In fact, when I said, it's the vachanas of Basavanna which made me question. This is one of the vachana of Basavanna who says, while questioning the Sanatan Hindu Dharma, he asks, the rich will make temples for Shiva. What, is, what shall I, a poor man, do? My legs are pillars, my body the shrine, the head a cupola of gold. Listen, O oh Lord. I can't make temple because my body itself is a temple. This kind of made me question, if at all somebody can just treat their own self as God, then you know, like why do we need to spend crores and crores of public money on building temples? Unfortunately, we have totally forgotten and erased Bas Basavanna in this country and I, I don't find it strange that they are diluting Basavanna in the textbook, right? Because that's a problem, if at all they keep him. Removal of Periyar, of course, one of the wisest choices because Periyar has questioned the caste practices, he is the one who allowed lower caste people uh, to enter into the temples in Tamil Nadu. He has brought in such a big social revolution in Tamil Nadu. They have removed him. Who else they have removed? They have, they have removed a lot of rationalist writers from the textbook community. Now, what happens if at all this is the way? We have a great example. Probably, you know, like many of you may not know this person. This is General Muhammad Zia ul Haq, one of the Prime Ministers of Pakistan, who led Pakistan to its downfall. Pakistan was supposed to be as good as India because they also copied and pasted the same constitutions as we did except that they just ensured that this is for Islamic country for all the people in uh, Pakistan. When Jia Bun Hub came, he ensured that apart from all the other things, in terms of education what he did was all the school textbooks and libraries were over overhauled to remove un-Islamic material. Anything which was considered as against Islam was removed. So all the rationalist, critical uh, thinking writers, their articles were removed from the textbooks. The schools were replaced with religious educational institutions. Islamic and Pak studies were made compulsory in schools and colleges. Now we know what path that led Pakistan to. Today it is not even considered, you know, as one of the developing nations. Look at his indices. They become a place for religious fundamentalism, which is not a good for us because they share the border with us. A country which is kind of giving scope for such fundamentalist ideas is not good for anywhere, for the civil world, right? We have a great example, but in spite of this, what, what are we doing in terms of our education? This is what we are doing. Now, I'm, I'm happy as well as sad when I make this statement that I'm happy that I completed my education before they made and introduced this national education policy. At the same time, I'm sad that I would live long enough to, to see the downfall you know, as outcome of these policies. 
we are vishwaguru in claims and poor in reality now just look at the colors right all those colors which are reflecting especially down south wherever you have seen the rationalists i showed the list of rationalists wherever you have seen the rationalists or those states apart from other economic or socio cultural reasons they have made lot of progress in terms of eradication of poverty eradication of uh, social discrimination and the states which have which have never had such a social reformers or revolutionaries they stayed backward but unfortunately we never appreciate these facts and we never teach our children that this is what has happened if it all you remove basavanna if it all you remove kuempu if it all you remove ambedkar in fact uh, the karnataka uh, textbook committee also diluted ambedkar i, I just uh, did not uh, have separate picture for an ambedkar so the reference to ambedkar as the principal architect of the constitution has been totally deleted ambedkar's mission for social equality as against the inequality embedded in the hindu religion based on caste has been rephrased as mere struggle for social reforms within the ambit of hinduism any reference to his fight for the untouchables against discrimination by caste hindus is also sanitized as an abstract reformist enterprise even ambedkar's embracing of buddhism he converted from hinduism to buddhism because he felt that the caste can never die his way of renouncing the hierarchical essence of hinduism is highlighted as a simple conversion to religion which is an integral part of hindu culture references to the social economic and political reasons behind the conversion have been deleted so if it all you don't tell our future generation what our society or country has gone through then we are not telling them the reality they will never be able to unless you have a clear knowledge of the past you can never make a better future that is something which our educationists or these policy makers are failing to understand and acknowledge the question is i have created i have kind of uh, presented before you all the problems and issues which we have the question is what we what we can do the way forward is i feel you know like every other community claims that they are minorities i'm not denying their uh, you know uh, claims but i guess it is the rationalists the secular people who are the real minorities because we are very less in number nobody supports us right I also like to appreciate uh, my friend, uh, sorry, my guide, my teacher, Narendra Nair. I keep asking, asking him, you know, don't you feel afraid because you speak so, you know, uh, boldly? So he says, I have learned to get over these fears. For me, sitting quietly and not saying what I have to say is worse than death. probably that is an attitude we all should that is a thought process we all should have because that is the only way we can bring in change right if it all we want a better future we want a better country i love this country as much as those people who want this country to go backwards but my love for this country is to make it a better place there i i don't know what intention they have but it doesn't sound appropriate to me so that is the distinction which we need to make the civil society and the now we have to reclaim our rights and our nation when they say that you go to pakistan why should i especially when you are making this nation and the pakistan right my and our motto should be to ensure that they would never treat that part we have to reclaim our rights and we have to reclaim our nation we have to ensure that this nation walks in the paths of those aspirations which were set out by our founders as per the constitution so there was a major uproar in karnataka against the textbook review committee for doing dismissing all the rationalism and all scientific a uh, temper and critical thinking from the education system and bringing all the conservative ideologies into the textbook 
all the activists filmmakers celebrities powerful politicians civil society everybody spoke about this and the result the same committee has been dissolved it's a small win but it's fine right sometimes uh, even a needle moving from one skill to another that is what we want because we can't just do a mass scale change overnight so small win is okay but that is what we need to target individually so at the end i would like to say this it shall be the duty of every citizen of india to develop the scientific temper humanism critical thinking spirit of inquiry and reform because that's on us that's a responsibility on each and every citizen as a citizen of this country and also a human being of this world now why i took this topic is simple few years before we were just discussing about doing some rationalist workshop for some in mangalore i come from coastal region uh, i know why we need scientific temper rationalism uh, everybody knows right uh, we are we are called as the district of most intelligent people for those who don't know in karnataka coastal karnataka has been regarded as the um, place of or district of intelligent people today i don't know our intelligent uh, our intelligence is totally missing we are well known for some other thing so we felt that rationalism is very much needed in this region that time when we were conversing we came to a conclusion that with apologies to all the people in this room we cannot change people who are elderly because they are a lost cause we can only change kids the younger minds because they are the future of this nation so you ensure that this is inculcated in the education system you ensure that you don't pollute with your communalism your fundamentalism the young minds because they will carry that responsibility forward and they will carry that progress forward and let's hope our country awakes to what ravindranath tagore once dreamed of where the mind is without fear where the knowledge is free where the world has not broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls with that thank you for listening have a wonderful day thank you very much